back and um we're back with a really exciting topic today about all the possible regional courses and scholarships available across all over australia and we have a wide panel of experts that have joined us today um we have miss saru jindal from victoria who is a qac certified senior course advisor with over 7 years of specialist experience in the international education sector and she's one of our most decorated education managers at Aussie's group um she comes with a wealth of knowledge and information when it comes to regional courses and scholarships and she has um innate skill and specialist knowledge um and has helped countless international students achieve their study goals in australia so welcome today saru and um we are then joined by miss pooja pawar from um sydney she plays a key role in student services and administering the right course to international students especially in regional nsw and she's an expert in understanding student aspirations and aligning their interests with the right course choice pooja has good experience in empathizing with student needs and understanding their complexities thereby um shaping their successful careers um we have manjeet kaur from brisbane who is the most well trained and experienced qualified education consultant based in aussie script brisbane and she has an understanding of all the latest program details of various educational institutions and all the technicalities about varieties of student profiles she always provides the best solutions to the students and um ultimately she works for the betterment of the students career by considering future prospective and um, industry requirements Lastly we are joined by Ms Manpreet Kaur from Adelaide who is a QAC certified course advisor and education manager at Aussie's group Adelaide and she harbors a strong desire and passion to help international students achieve the best career outcomes she is a subject matter expert in consulting international students for best scholarship outcome especially with regional providers thank you so much everyone for joining us today um our uh, viewers will be leaving their um questions in the comment section below so um everyone please leave them for us and our panelists will take care of them over to you saru thank you riti thank you for such a wonderful introduction for all of us um i hope i'm loud uh, so that everyone can hear me um just a saying good evening to everyone um so today's session is going to be talking about regional courses and the scholarships it is much sought after information nowadays because all the students they are looking to study in regional areas be it regional victoria new south wales canberra tasmania western australia adelaide gold coast these are one of the most popular uh, destinations for students to study and a lot of students are moving interstate uh, to study uh, you know courses in the regional areas and then we'll be touch basing on the scholarships the most popular scholarships which are provided especially for higher education providers and universities in these regional areas Uh, so today i will be discussing about victoria and tasmania and then my colleagues from different states would be discussing uh, for the respective regional areas so to start off what is a regional area you know because now we know there is a new definition of regional area which is coming to place anything except for melbourne sydney and brisbane yes many students are not aware of this if you study anywhere apart from melbourne sydney and brisbane you are considered studying in a regional area now there are basically two types of uh, categories which are defined by the department for a regional area uh, first is a category 2 which is cities and the major regional centers so and then third is a category 3 which is original centers and other regional areas so what is the difference uh, the category 2 which is cities and major regional centers this includes the major cities you know anything apart from melbourne sydney and brisbane but are still considered a major city um, is considered as a city and a category 2 major regional center uh, so this includes uh, cities like perth adelaide uh, gold coast sunshine coast hobart canberra geelong so all of these are a category 2 regional center and then comes a category 3 regional center now anything apart from this according to the post codes which are listed on the department's website they are uh, considered as regional centers or other regional areas now obviously the incentives you know which students receive uh whether they study in a category 2 regional area or a category 3 they differ from migration point of view you know the number of uh, post study uh, work years that you get 
uh, that is a one year extra or a two year extra after your 485. It depends whether you are studying in a category two or a category three. And also there are certain other incentives uh, from migration point of view, which differ from a category two or a category three. So it's important uh, for students to understand uh, whether they are studying in a category two regional area or a category three regional area. Now next, you know, why should one study in a regional area? Everybody wants to study in Melbourne or Sydney, um, you know, but why, what are the benefits? What are the USPs of studying, especially in a regional area? The first and the foremost is the lifestyle and culture. Trust me, guys, if, you're, if you are staying um, in a regional area or if you're studying there, staying and studying there, the lifestyle is amazing. It's totally different from you know studying and staying in Melbourne uh, say for example as I'm from Melbourne so uh, you know I can do that comparison if I go to one of the regional areas around Melbourne uh, the lifestyle is entirely different uh, the cost of living is certainly lower you know the rental prices if you compare accommodation in one of the city areas and one of the regional it's you know almost half so you are definitely saving on to money there with the academic atmosphere, uh, with the campus of universities, it's such a pleasant uh, atmosphere there. You have bigger university campuses. You have much wider course choices which are available um, in the regional universities uh, as compared to the university campuses which are in the city. So that atmosphere is entirely different. You get that university feel. You get that um, exposure um, You know when you are studying at one of those regional campuses. You get to explore the real Australia. You get to see the landscapes. You get to see the greenery, the beaches, the waterfalls, everything there. And then obviously when we are looking uh, at benefits uh, from migration point of view, you get additional years of post-study work visa. If you are studying in one of the regional, staying and studying in one of the regional areas. And plus you get extra points from migration. So if you look at these benefits, um, I would certainly say that, you know, I can certainly understand why students are moving to regional areas nowadays and why they are choosing to study in one of the regional providers rather than uh, studying in one of the uh, city. Uh, now, as we discussed in the starting that today we are going to touch base on both the regional areas as well as the scholarships. So before going into the details of the providers and the scholarships, um, I thought let's discuss first about what are the different types of scholarships uh, which are provided uh, to international students in Australia. You know, many times students are not aware that it's not only the providers, the institutes who give the scholarships, but it also it is also the Australian government who has different types of scholarships for international students. So I'll just touch base on few scholarships, uh, you know, which are provided by the uh, by the government, Australian government. So first is Australia Awards. Now, Australia Awards is uh, a scholarship which is given by DFAT, which is Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Um, it is given basically to uh, student, international students from some specific developing countries who are looking to study in uh, universities and TAFEs, so higher education only, in some universities or TAFEs in Australia. So there, there's a list of participating TAFEs and universities, and pretty much every university is, has been participating for Australia Awards. So you can always find a list of those participating uh, providers. Um, and this scholarship, as I told, is provided by uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Second is a Destination Australia scholarship. Now, this scholarship is targeting regional universities. So regional universities like, for example, CSU Regional Campus, Southern Cross University, Charles Darwin University, University of Tasmania, University of Canberra, all these universities, they offer Destination Australia scholarship. Now, this scholarship is again offered by Australian government and uh, the amount for this scholarship is up to 15,000 per year. Now, every university, they have sometimes some selection of courses for which they offer this scholarship. There's always a separate application process for this one. And there's a deadline um, for the application to be applied. So, you know, and the entry criteria is you should meet the entry requirements of the course and you should have a good profile, you know. So it, they look at the overall profile of the candidate. The um, It is also looks at your academics. It looks at your extracurricular uh, profile as well. So the complete profile is looked into and there are very limited spaces, uh, you know, for this scholarship. Uh, so you can always... Uh, uh, we can always assess your profile and see, you know, whether you we can apply for Destination Australia or not. But yes, it is for both undergraduate and postgraduate courses, but only for regional universities. Uh, 
Next is the Australian Government Research Training Program. Now, this scholarship is basically for students who are looking to study research programs. So uh, any student who is looking to study Masters of Research or PhD, uh, there is Australian Government Research Training Program Scholarship, which is offered for you. And the last is the provider scholarships, which obviously varies uh, depending on the provider. Every provider off offers some or the other uh, scholarship to international students uh, you know, who are in Australia or applying even from offshore. So uh, depending on the provider and the entry criteria, we can always uh, look at the different scholarships. So now we will be discussing about regional providers and why should somebody study in regional Victoria? What are the benefits? Now, first is in Victoria, what are the major regional areas? Um, you know, now, obviously, there's such a huge uh, was, uh, landscape here that you have so many regional areas, but the major regional area where providers have their campuses are Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong, and Shepparton. And, you know, any one of these, I mean, I've been to all four of them, uh, all four places. They are not so far away from uh, Melbourne. You know, they are just one hour to one and a half hours drive uh, from here and amazing to live, amazing places to live. Obviously, if you look at the benefits, as I discussed earlier, that they are more, more affordable living. Campuses are larger, unique course options. I mean, some of the courses which are offered at one of these campuses are amazing, like um, I'll give an example, Latrobe University, they offer this course called Master of Internet of Things at their Bendigo campus. Now, this is one unique course which is not offered by any other university, you know, in any of their other campuses. So there are some unique course options which are available in these regional campuses as well. And then visa incentives, as we discussed, there are always migration incentives attached to it, you know, extra post-study work, uh, years, extra years to study and uh, post-study work visa, extra years, and also the extra migration points. So now getting into the main uh, providers, most popular courses which are available in regional Victoria. Uh, now, most popular ones is, I would say, the top of the list is nursing. Um, you know, there's, there's diploma as well as bachelor's of nursing options available in regional Victoria. Uh, then there's social work, uh, master's of social work also, which is available with Federation University. Then there's teaching, uh, you know, the master's of teaching courses available as well. Uh, then there are diploma courses like hairdressing and beauty therapy for some students who are interested and trade courses which are always popular with students. So trade courses like commercial cookery, automotive, painting are available. And now there's a new provider who is even offering a certificate for an engineering welding stream, which is available in Geelong. So all these courses are available in regional Victoria itself. So, you know, if you are looking to stay uh, in Victoria and not move around to other states. So these are the most popular courses which are available in regional Victoria. So going into detail with the major providers and what scholarships they have. So first I'll be discussing about the higher education providers which are available um, in regional Victoria. Uh, first is Australian Catholic University. They do have a campus in Melbourne, but they do have a campus in Ballarat, which is their regional campus. And they do offer a bachelor's of nursing at that campus as well. They have really attractive scholarship. I mean, the first scholarship which I've listed down here is the International Student Scholarship, which is amounts to 50% of your course fee, the entire course. So I'm not talking about just first year, 50% of your entire course fee. Obviously, there are limited spaces. This is a merit-based scholarship. So depending on your academics, uh, students is assessed. But then places are limited, but then this is a really, really attractive. So if you think you're looking to study in Ballarat uh, with ACU and you have you, your academics are good, we should definitely apply for international student scholarship. And the next is the Global Excellence Scholarship, which amounts to $5,000 per year. Now, Global Excellence Scholarship is basically for every student who meets the entry requirement for the course, they are automatically assessed for the scholarship. You don't need to submit a separate application form for this. Next is Federation University. Federation University has a number of campuses in regional Victoria. To start off, they have Ballarat, Gippsland, and Wimmera. So all of these are regional campuses within Victoria. And Federation has uh, unique uh, courses which they offer um, in regional campuses. One of the most popular one is social work. The scholarships with Federation is a Global Innovator Scholarship, a 20% scholarship for international students and a Global Excellence Scholarship of 25%. And both these scholarships are merit-based. So depending on your academic um, onshore and offshore results, um, you will be assessed for these scholarships. 
Next is Latrobe University. They have regional campuses in Albury, Vatanga, uh, Bendigo, Mildura, and Shepparton. The scholarships which are offered by Latrobe are the Latrobe International Scholarship, which is 25%. And also there's a regional campus scholarship of $5,000. So, you know, they have a specific scholarship for regional campuses. That is, if you're studying in one of the regional campuses, you automatically qualify for the $5,000 scholarship and you don't need a separate application form for it. And next is Deakin University, a uh, quite popular campus in Geelong and also in Warrnambool. Next, uh, I'll be talking about TAFEs and the private providers, so any vocational courses if you're looking to study. Now, when it comes to vocational, you know, they don't have a specific scholarship, but time and again, there's always a special pricing when it comes to uh, vocational providers. And uh, we can always check for an application for a particular intake, whether there's a special pricing. Sometimes they do give COVID discounts to students uh, because of the current scenario. Uh, but then we can always check for the pricing because it depends intake to intake. But I've listed down the major uh, popular courses which are available with these uh, providers in the regional campuses. So to start off, Kingan Institute, which is one of the TAFEs in Bendigo, they do offer nursing. Diploma of nursing is quite popular with them in the Bendigo campus. Then they have commercial cookery, community services, and beauty therapy. Now, Kingan, definitely, they have many more courses. But then these are the courses which they offer at the Bendigo campus. Next is Veritas Institute in Geelong. Uh, they offer commercial cookery, quite popular for commercial cookery courses. And then they have the Diploma and Advanced Diploma of Leadership Management. Uh, next is the Center of Excellence, again in Geelong. They have all these courses related to building and construction. So they have a certificate three in painting. They offer special pricing for students who are on a 485 or TR. And then they have a diploma of building and construction. And they have this new course called Advanced Diploma of Civil Construction Design. Guys, as we know, this is one of the most popular courses among students these days because, you know, once you complete this course, you don't need any work experience uh, for your skill assessment. You can directly get your skills assessed after completing this two years advanced diploma of civil construction design. And this is one of the most popular courses too nowadays. Next is Everest Institute. They have a campus in Shepparton where they run their automotive course. And as I was telling, this is a new provider, learning prof the learning professionals in Geelong. And they have started with the certificate four in uh, engineering uh, with specialization in welding. And they do offer automotive as well. So guys, this was about Victoria and the regional providers in Victoria. Next, uh, we'll be discussing Tasmania. Tasmania uh, is definitely one of the most beautiful places to visit. The entire, from migration point of view, the entire state is regional. So, you know, if you study anywhere in Tasmania, the most popular locations, as we know, is Hobart and Los Anston. But then the, anywhere, if you study in Tasmania, the entire state is regional. Uh, with Tasmania, as they say, if you enjoy great outdoors and you don't mind the cold because the weather is a little chilly there, but you are budget conscious, then Tasmania is the place for you. And especially for people who enjoy outdoor activities, you know, like hiking, cycling, fishing, uh, kayaking, rock climbing, any sort of outdoor activities, if you enjoy, then definitely Tasmania is must visit. Now, next coming to the most popular courses in Tasmania. The first and foremost, I would say again, nursing, um, you know, which is the most popular course choice among students. And also, as we know, the department has, um, you know, always given incentive for students and, you know, uh, for students who are in who are working and studying in health industry. And with Tasmania, uh, the other most popular courses are social work, uh, laboratory medicine, community services and other allied health courses, horticulture. Uh, trade courses like commercial cookery, automotive, building and construction. And also now providers, they offer the civil construction design as well in Tasmania. The course offering with Tasmania, you know, every month there's one or the other new course offering which comes into place in Tasmania because it has become quite popular with students. And as we know from Tasmania, students are looking to study as per their uh, the priority uh, industry list. So most of these courses, they align with the priority industry list. And uh, so if you study with them, then obviously, you know, you are given preference. So students should choose their courses wisely when they study, uh, when they are looking to move to Tasmania. Uh, with Tasmania, uh, let's talk about the university. So there's only one university, one uh, university of Tasmania, which is 
one of the most amazing universities. A lot of international students um, from offshore also, they come to study here and they have uh, really unique and good course offerings. Um, with the scholarships, they are offering a Tasmanian international scholarship of 25% to both onshore and offshore students. And they do time and again offer a relocation bursary as well, you know, for students who are onshore, uh, living in Australia, studying somewhere else and are moving to Tasmania. Uh, they offer a relocation bursary uh, time and again. Now the applications um, have already closed, uh, you know, uh, for July intake they did offer, but for Feb they have not started uh, the applications yet, but soon uh, you will see that relocation bursary being offered to students. Then there's another higher education provider, which many of the students are not aware of. There's a provider in Hobart called Top Education Institute, but they do have a very limited course offering. They offer a graduate certificate, a graduate diploma, or a master's in professional accounting. So any students who are looking to study accounting, uh, the Top Education Institute, they do have uh, good course offerings there. Next is uh, the TAS TAFE, uh, which is the TAFE um, in Tasmania. Um, amazing course offerings. They have really wide variety of courses. Um, they offer uh, courses in nursing, which is a diploma of nursing. They have diploma level courses and they do have a pathway with the University of Tasmania where you can start a diploma with TASTEF and then continue your higher education uh, with the university. So they have courses in nursing, IT, commercial cookery, uh, community services, horticulture and early childhood. Um, next, uh, when we talk about the private providers, uh, one of the top private providers which offers courses in agriculture basically is uh, Technical Institute of Victoria, now, uh, commonly known as TIV. They do offer a certificate uh, courses in uh, production horticulture and a diploma in agribusiness. So which again, you know, uh, relates to the priority industrialist. So which is one of the only providers which um, I mean, apart from TASTAF, they have horticulture as well. One of the only providers uh, which offer horticulture and agribusiness in Tasmania. Uh, next is the other private providers. Um, one is Orange International College in Hobart, which is quite popular. They do have a campus in Melbourne as well. They offer building and construction courses and uh, leadership and management courses in Hobart. The next is VTI, Vocational Training Institute. Uh, they offer automotive and community services. As you know, community services is very, very popular course in Tasmania. There are a lot of students who move to, uh, you know, who have studied some accounting, IT, and they have skill assessment already, but they do uh, go to Tasmania to study community services because, again, this aligns with the priority industry list, uh, which Tasmanian government has released. Next is AIBT or their sister college, Reach Community College. They have a very wide variety of courses um, available um, in both these uh, both of these providers. Um, they offer certificate three in individual support, you know, with specialization in aid services or disability. They have diploma in community services, uh, commercial cookery, and they do offer travel and tourism diplomas as well. Uh, they have civil construction design. Again, the two years course, which I said is very popular with students because no work experience requirement for your skill assessment. And they have building and construction. They do have a diploma in transport and logistics as well, guys, if uh, you know any of the students are interested to study that because again, that aligns with the priority industry list. And there's another college called Australian Sovereign College, which has commercial cookery and community services. So guys, this is about Tasmania. Uh, there are a lot of other providers, obviously, I can't uh, list down all the providers and all the course offerings, but we can always discuss on a case to case basis. So thank you uh, for joining me for Victoria and Tasmania. If you have any questions, um, I forgot to say it earlier, if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section, we will be taking all these questions at the end of the session. Um, so next, I will pass on uh, to my colleague Pooja, who will be discussing about New South Wales and ACT. Thank you, Saru, for the introduction. Hello everyone, I'm Puta Papar and I work in uh, Aussie's group, Sydney, Parramatta branch. And I will be sharing some information regarding NSW regional campuses, 
uh, what are the areas which are included in the regional NSW, as well as uh, what are the benefits of living there and about the scholarship provided by the universities and what are the college options for the various courses there. So when we talk about NSW, NSW as a whole, it's a very big state. So there are few regional, regional areas which are considered as regional in NSW. Some of them are Albury, Wagga Wagga, Bathurst, Lismore, Coffs Harbour, Wollongong, Armidale. So there are plenty of them depending on the post posts which are mentioned on NSW um, website as well. So I've just listed a few of them. And um, the benefits of living in NSW regional it's a large, it's very large in terms of a state, and it, it does have a very diverse regional economic uh, in Australia. <clears throat> the cost of living, as Saru told, that if you live in regional versus if you are living in a city, the cost of living would be always lower in regional areas of Australia. Um, there are a lot of national parks and spectacular coastlines because most of the NSW regionals are mainly based on the <clears throat> coastal areas, sorry. Some of the popular courses which are in NSW regional would be on top of the list would always be nursing because of the, um, now because of the popular demand, nursing is there. We do have occupational therapy, social work, teaching, information technology, engineering, community services, trade courses, a lot of popular courses are in trade courses are commercial cookery these days, automotive, painting, wall and floor tiling, brick laying and brick block laying. So I will be discussing some of these courses and which universities are offering and what scholarship they have for you. So some of the uh, major providers which are offering scholarship in NSW regional are one of them is Charles Sturt University. They do offer some courses and they do, they have campuses in Albury, Bathurst, Wagga Wagga, Dubbo, Orange, Port Macquarie, and they are offering scholarship, which is 30% for first year of the, of the course. So it's only 30% for first year of your course, whether it's bachelor or uh, master's degree, but it's only for the first year. We do have Southern Cross University. They have campus in Lismore, Cops Harbor. They are providing a scholarship of 5,000, which is a regional scholarship only available for first year of course, including nursing, because most of the universities, they don't offer uh, any scholarship for nursing students. Uh, but uh, if you talk about uh, Southern Cross University, they are offering the scholarship for nursing courses as well. We do have uh, TAFE NSW, which is offering a lot of courses such as Diploma of Nursing. They are offering early childhood courses, social community services. They do have campus in North Coast, Hunter, and Central Coast, New England, Western NSW, Illawarra, Riverina. These are some of the campuses. They do have campus in Wollongong as well. Um, then we have Duke College, which have a campus in Richmond NSW. Richmond is very close to Sydney City. <clears throat> then we have Peace Institute, which have uh, some courses available. They do have certificate free course of uh, commercial cookery, certificate free, certificate for some of the trade courses they have. And it's in Tweet Heads. Then we have Actors College of Theatre and Television, which is located in Wollongong. And we have University of Wollongong College, which is in Wollongong. So if we talk about University of Wollongong, uh, sorry, so there are some of the major education providers. There are not plenty of them in NSW uh, regional area. However, there are only five universities available there. One is University of Wollongong, which, is, uh, which have campus in Wollongong. Then another one is University of New England. They have campus in Armidale. Um, we have University of Newcastle. They do have campus in Newcastle. We have uh, CSU. They have many campus. They have Port Macquarie. They have Dubbo. They have Orange. They do have many campuses around NSW regional. 
And the other one is Southern Cross University. They also have few um, campuses in NSW Regional. <clears throat> we also have some of the VET providers in NSW Regional. If NSW, they provide courses such as Diploma of Community Service, Diploma of Nursing, um, they also have some courses for early childhood as well, and they have campus in Bulongong. Um, then we have University of Bulongong College. They only offer one course, which is Diploma of Nursing in their Bulongong campus. Then uh, we also have Access College of Theater and Television. They do offer uh, uh, some diploma courses, which uh, one of them is a uh, Graduate Diploma of Management. And uh, we have Duke College. They offer certificate for courses. Uh, they have certificate of commercial cookery, certificate three, certificate four, diploma of hotel management. Uh, they have carpentry as well. And uh, we also have Peach Institute, which is also offering a lot of trade courses in NSW Regional. Now, uh, I'm also covering uh, some of the regional uh, area from uh, Australian Capital Territory, ACT. The entire state is regional and uh, the capital, uh, we are talking about Canberra, which is the national capital of Australia. So Canberra is more famous for their festivals and events. It's also very well connected. It's, a, it's very affordable. The cost of living is quite, is quite low in there as compared to other states. And it's one of the safest city in Australia. <clears throat> Some of the most popular courses in ACT is nursing, teaching, information technology, community service, leadership and management, business courses. Then we have trade courses. One of them is commercial cookery, building and construction, painting and carpentry. These are some of the trade courses they have. We have some major providers in Canberra. One of them is University of Canberra. They are offering a scholarship, which is International Course Merit Scholarship, which is 25%. They are also having International High Achiever Scholarship, which is 20% on, on the course duration. Um, then we have Canberra Institute of Technology, which is also called as TAFE Canberra. They have some courses which are diploma courses and commercial cookery as well. We also have Crown Institute of uh, Business and Technology. They mainly offer more of the business and uh, business and management courses. They have uh, leadership and management. They have project management, some of the courses. They do have scholarship of 10%, which is a COVID discount. And we have Capital College there. We have Canberra Business and Technology College and Unity College in Canberra. Thank you. I'll pass on now to Manpreet. She will be sharing uh, some of the regional information with you guys on SA and uh, on South Australia and uh, national territory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pooja, uh, for such a nice words. And thank you very much for the introduction in the beginning. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Manreet. I will be discussing about South Australia and Northern Territory as the regional um, area for the study and some of the top uh, providers and scholarship that they are offering at this stage. All right. So um, I don't think so. I'll have to say uh, South Australia being the regional area, how it is. However, just for all the um, audience, I'm just going to reiterate about South Australia. The whole um, state itself is a regional state. Um, Greater Adelaide, everybody knows, um, is more popular uh, among a lot of people. They might be know about Greater Adelaide, but um, I just don't want to confuse the audience uh, because they might confuse it with Greater Adelaide and outer regional area with the major areas. So um, let's keep that separate. So it does not have the relation with the studies. In terms of the studies, um, 
we can say the major regional area is greater adelaide uh, in south australia apart from that we have some campuses of tafe south australia in some other regional areas which we've listed down here such as barossa and riverland kangaroo island limestone coast so you might be able to explore other uh, regional campuses with them but other than that i think the main um, the focus of the main area where most of the public universities or the top providers resides are in greater adelaide um when it comes to explaining what are the benefits of studying in south australia in particular well there are heaps apart from being uh, the state as the whole regional area it definitely um offers a lot of other um, additional benefits such as um it has been listed as one of the most um, livable city in the world according to the global livable index um adelaide in particular has been in that list for many years uh, which i think says a lot because it it has been consistently shortlisted as safest place to live in livable city to live in so obviously that states a lot about the city itself other than that it's one of the most affordable state uh, if you compare all other states in australia uh, transportation living um, because it's just not about uh, spending money on your education but to also you know look into the other factors such as you'll be spending on your living expenses on your rent on your transportation on your um, education any other education related expenses so in terms of affordability South Australia has always been um, one of the you know top uh, place to live in in terms of choosing that. Other than that, I think the main focus when you decide which place to study is to also see at the career uh, possible career outcomes or what are the employment opportunities. I've seen a lot of students lately um, checking with us that you know we do take admission in particular career in 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 a foreign country and then we don't end up continuing the same career. A uh, good thing about South Australia, or the key benefit that you will receive if you will study in South Australia, is that South Australian government has now heavily started to um you know work towards uh, one of the key sectors that they want to boost in south australia there are some top sectors uh, like health hospitality and tourism and south australian government has constantly put efforts to uplift those areas which is why they have announced that in 2022 there will be around 16300 international education related jobs so it's it's not just about uh, coming here and taking the quality for an education but to also ensure that you are going to gain some practical experience so south australian government is heavily heavily trying a lot to encourage the employment and um, if a lot of people might have already know that there are a lot of changes that has come into place in the migration as well so the international education has a direct impact in the migration as well so studying in south australia alone um, will not only give you the benefit in terms of your qualification but also offers you additional benefit in terms of migration pathways which are not as difficult as the other state comparatively uh, increased employment opportunities which is obviously the main goal uh, at the end of the day when you finish your studies that you are able to get the employment in the relevant area or employment in general in your area of interest so these are some of the key um, you know benefits i believe which are very practical for any international students to think about when they want to study and at the same time their focus is also on some of the key sectors which are very popular in south australia coming to the most popular courses mm -hmm. i think the king of all courses here uh, we're going to give that award straight to nursing i don't want to repeat that again and again so this is definitely the potato in our curry and we definitely think that nursing is the most popular one um other than that if we have other places it is for information technology uh, social and community services um considering that south australia has a large amount of um, elderly population their focus is a lot on residential care on um, community services so south australia has been one of the most 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 popular uh, choice of place to study when it comes to the health courses and also the fact that uh, there are a lot of employment opportunities so social and community services nurse apart from nursing um, i just want to burst that bubble because there are a lot of other options in health as well so i want to especially emphasize on social and community services is a great option in south australia uh, other than that uh, trade courses we have a lot of trade courses which are popular uh, come apart from commercial cookery automotive technology and horticulture 
there has been two addition uh, carpentry and wall and floor tiling which was not there in adelaide but in 2021 these two courses have also been introduced uh, hospitality uh, plenty of uh, plenty of uh, job opportunities and plenty of options to study hospitality are available in south australia other than that um, among the vocational courses the most popular choice is generally business management such as leadership um, social media marketing or project management or um, those small individual support certificates these courses all comes into the vocational but these are the top uh, courses that students generally are very very inclined when they want to study in south australia coming back on the major providers and scholarship that they are offering um, at this stage we have uh, three main public universities which are there in south australia university of south australia flinders university and university of adelaide um saru has mentioned in the beginning that um, these are these are categorized as category 1 uh, designated area category 2 designated area and category 3 designated area uh, with south australia it is actually category 2 um i think in migration point of view you might as well want to check with the migration agent what is actually category 2 and category 3 in depth and what benefits it offers in migration point of view uh, but the most popular one is obviously you can avail additional one year of temporary graduate visa so all these public university universities fall in category 2 um the major scholarship uh, the public university has is academic merit scholarship the main criteria is if you good in academics um, there is a scholarship for you it starts from 25% goes up to 50% so anybody on um, anybody who has um, you know high grades in their last qualification and um, if they reach out to us there are great merit scholarship based on the academics other than that as saru explained i don't want to get into repetition of those scholarships so destination scholarship award scholarship early bird promotion all these are always there with these public universities and vocational universities as well so all the criteria will remain the same and the scholarship amount definitely varies which is at, at this moment is 25 to 50% with public universities um other than that if you list other university which are very popular or the places to study is obviously um torrens university uh, federation university these two have been very very popular and kaplan business school so when it comes to um, medium uh, range of um, tuition fees uh, when it comes to the affordability these three has been the most most popular one torrens iibit which is in association with federation university uh, kaplan business school so these three has been the most popular one again they have a range of courses that they also offer which we've discussed so all the top of uh, courses that we were listing down uh, the major higher education courses are available with them um, at this moment torrens university is having 20% of scholarship on offshore uh, courses so anybody sitting in the offshore country looking to study with torrens they can avail 20% scholarship on the whole course uh, when it comes to the onshore they have a variety of scholarship um, depending upon the region as well they have a latin american scholarship which is 30% they have a academic merit scholarship which is 25% they also have onshore transfer scholarship which is 15% so all in all uh, what we trying to say here is there are some scholarship options available for students sitting in onshore and offshore locations you might as well want to get in touch with your education um, consultant to understand those scholarship and the eligibility criteria because of course we can't uh, list all the information in brief here we're trying to give you just the brief information and then you can understand if you are eligible for that scholarship other than that iibit is having um 20 to 25% um just clarifying iibit is in association with federation university so you will be getting some part of the scholarship from iibit some part of the scholarship from federation which in total uh, amounts to around 25% other than kaplan business school um they also have a great scholarship but i would like to highlight the one which is i i believe is worth appreciating their efforts uh, which is the health uh, frontline scholarship so all the people who are serving the community in this pandemic and are working as a health frontline workers they have um, uh, this option to avail 50% of scholarship on the entire course 
So a big shout out to all the nurses, uh, to all the health um, workers who are working in, in, in that line. If Australia is your choice of study, I think it's a, it's a massive scholarship which you want to avail, 50% off on the entire tuition fees. So um, this is one special scholarship I really wanted to mention about Kaplan. Other than that, they also have an academic merit, merit scholarship up to 30%, depending upon your grades. And they have onshore transfer scholarship, which is around 10%. Uh, when it comes to the vocational providers, uh, with vocational, they generally do not have any set criteria apart from the academic merit and other criteria that we were discussing. But mostly they focus is on early bird. So let's say you start early, you may get some scholarships. So they have promotions like this. Um, there are always, um, you know, some sort of scholarships available on the vocational courses. And anyway, um, the prices are very reasonable. So you for vocational um, courses, you might as well again want to get in touch with your education consultant and see what's the latest. Uh, talking about the latest, uh, I'd say with Equals International, their most popular one is 20% on their Bachelor's of Human Services course. On the entire course, that's the top scholarship I'd like to list. Um, I invoke Durban International, Skills Australia, AHTS, TFSA, they all have early bird scholarship. Uh, or some of the other promotion that they keep running in each trimester. But the top one we've already listed. Um, other than that, um, I believe that um, all these scholarships that we are listing down here, these scholarships can vary from semester to semester. So whatever information we are providing to you, this is the exclusive information based on 2021. So I really, really would want to request the audience that you would want to still check with your education consultant, which is the latest scholarship, scholarship applicable to their particular interest of course that they want to apply. Then comes to the Northern Territory. Um, well, we everybody know that Northern Territory is very, very popular for its, um, uh, for its, um, Uluru, uh, which is a national, one of the world heritage site as well. It has a great religious importance among Aboriginal culture, but obviously it's a great tourist spot. Um, definitely in outskirts of Australia. So if you ever want to experience life with, without all that hustle and bustle from everywhere, I think I would definitely go to Northern Territory and watch the red soil and go to the constant drive to one direction so definitely a great place for your road trips and it's a nice uh, you know location to live in uh, other than that the great benefit it offers to international student that it's the entire uh, state is regional so obviously you are definitely going to get the benefit and one thing i'd like to highlight is that um, northern territory is category three um, regional area which means anyone who is going to study higher education from um, this area will be getting um, three years, I mean, two plus two years of uh, temporary graduate. So in total, they can have a potential of four years of temporary graduate visa through uh, the studies that they are going to finish in, in, in the Darwin or in the Northern Territory area. Um, when it comes to, you know, the highlights of Northern Territory, everybody knows that uh, Charles Darwin University is one of the most, most popular one and prestigious university, and that is in Northern Territory. Uh, CDU University ranks top 2% of the world's university. And um, interestingly, uh, even though it's a very... Um, it might look like a lonely place as this is what the common feedback a lot of students may say. It's a very deserted place. I'm, I probably were not going to find anybody, but surprisingly, it has the lowest unemployment rate in the country. So um, students, it's not just about um, the academics or, or uh, the, the benefit that you're going to study, but also you have to look into the employment part because that's equally important here um, in Australia and for anybody for that matter who comes here and want to experience the practical life and also the theoretical knowledge that you'll be gaining. Um, they're very well known for the Darwin Festival. I've not been there, but I for sure I think it's worth trying. Um, they are also very, very popular for the Darwin beer. So any beer lover, um, you would want to go there. And um, yeah, it's definitely a beautiful place to visit and uh, to study as well. Talking on um, their major providers and the scholarship there. So they only have one university, which is Charles Darwin University. Um, 
Charles Darwin University currently having high achievers scholarship, which is up to fifty percent. Again, uh, the scholarship might sound very repetitive because it's the criteria which Saru already said remains the same. It uh, it's just that every um, university have their individual criteria to select the candidates for the scholarship. So I think what you really need to check is if you fit into that uh, category of the selection criteria for that scholarship. But generally, I think if you have high academics, there is a chance you can get scholarship. Or if you have um, high skills or some experience, there could be something for you. So might as well you want to check with your consultant. Um, other than that, um, when it comes to the vocational providers, um, there are three top providers that I'd like to highlight. Uh, one is IH Sydney. They have a Northern Territory campus. Um, then we have Australian City College and Australian Careers College. All three category three. And um, when it comes to the scholarship, as I've mentioned already, that the scholarship heavily rely on some early bird or some promotion or some discounts on the courses. So for all kinds of latest promotion and scholarship, might as well you want to get in touch with your consultant about that. Um, I think that's it for my end. Uh, telling about South Australia and about Northern Territory, but my personal favorite will always be South Australia. So I'm now going to hand over to our next uh, speaker to give the further information. Thank you very much. Apologies, Isabella, I think it's you. Oh, good. Thank you. Can't open the slide. Sorry, guys, the slide is not working. Can't open the slide. Hey, Saru. I can't. Yeah, I'll try to open the slide from my end, Isabella. Just give me yes, a minute. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I will just share my screen as well now. Okay, thanks, Saru. It's no problem. Hi, everyone. I'm Isabel. I'm from West uh, Moses Group, Western Australia, Perth. So today I'll be talking about Western Australia. So major regional area in Western Australia, which is Perth. So provide safe environment to the international student to gain quality educations. And as well as Greater and Perth have ranked in the most affordable major capital in Australia. And Perth ranked number six as world most livable city in the world. And as well as a leader in science and innovations in Perth. So as regional WM most popular courses, it will be nursing, of course, so the one nursing course is the most popular for the international student. We have computer science, engineering courses, information technology, teaching, social work, and early childhood. For regional WM major provider and scholarship, we have three big universities in Perth. First of all, we have Mandalay University. So they are four into category two, which you, you will have two plus one, um, four and five in the future. So in Mandalay University, they offer scholarship um, for online international students. 
there's 40% fees reduction for fees. It's only for online education. So you study online and offshore students. As well as they have 20% onshore international scholarship, offshore international welcomes, 12,000 bursary on nursing and business courses, offshore international welcome scholarship, 11,000 bursary for others degree for Murdoch University. For next university is ECU Edit COVID University, which they offer 30% scholarship for offshore online study. And they do offer 20% of nursing courses for online online study as well. Um, other than nursing course, they offer 20% onshore student scholarship except for nursing. Another un big university where is Curtin University. So they only offer academic merit scholarship 25% of first year tuition fees, alumni and family scholarship 25% of first year tuition fees, as well as 20% scholarship on STEM courses on show postgraduate student valid for first year only. So others than all um, major university, we still have like colleges, Lead College, um, Stanley College, they offer ongoing bursary and early bird discount as well. So this is all for WA um, Perth University offering. So if you do have any inquiry, we'll be have a Q&A question at the end of this um, live section. So I'll pass this to Manjip Kau for Queensland. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you, Isabel. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Manjit Kaur working in Queensland in the Brisbane CBD office. So I'll be focusing on uh, uh, regional areas, uh, regional providers in the Queensland and the wet providers. So So as we all know, uh, in Queensland, uh, there are so many regional areas, but the major regional areas are Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast. And uh, Queensland is also ranked as a number 10th world's most livable city, which is a Brisbane in here. And uh, um, Australia, is the, this is Australia's second largest state that offers beaches, reef and rainforests. And in Queensland, uh, there is an excellent health system and there are a lot of job opportunities in the healthcare, hospitality, community service, uh, manufacturing, mining, resources, construction, and agriculture. So uh, here uh, we have so many providers in the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast because these are the major regional cities in the Queensland. Because as we all know, Gold Coast is a tourist place and it is uh, most popular among the international students. So there are so many regional universities which are providing different courses, major courses available in uh, <clears throat> Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast are nursing, as we all know, which is a hot course among international students, and uh, other is teaching, social work, engineering, business, early childhood. These are the major courses which are provided in the regional areas uh, in the Queensland. Um, so first, we are talking about the major provider, Southern Cross University, and it is a, it is available in the Gold Coast. They have campus in the Gold Coast. It comes under category two, uh, category two, as we all know that under category two, we will have a benefit of getting one year extra uh, 485 visa. So uh, we will be uh, eligible to apply for the one year extra postgraduate visa if we study in the cat category two regional area. So uh, three types of scholarships are offered by the Southern Cross University. Uh, one is regional scholarship, which is 5,000 per year. And uh, second one is diversification scholarship, and uh, which amounts to 8,000 per year for every course. And there is a third scholarship, which is a outstanding academic scholarship, which is 15,000 per year. So, uh, I mean, it, it uh, depends on academic performance. So, 
we have to apply for these scholarships. That regional scholarship, five thousand per year, is available. I mean, we don't have to apply for it. It is. It will be automatically reflect on the offer letter. But for that outstanding academic scholarship, which amounts to fifteen thousand per year, we have to apply for that in the university. And the second provider is University of Sunshine Coast. It also comes under category two, and uh, they are also providing a lot of courses in the nursing social work. These are the major. Um, their major courses a uh, bachelor of nursing graduate entry and they are also offering the scholarship in that uh, which is 15% of the scholarship so it's a kind of affordable if someone is keen into nursing and they want to do nursing in the region area so this is a kind of a affordable a provider for them and they have but they have limited intakes available for that and uh, third one is uh, homes institute homes is also available in the gold coast campus and it is the most affordable uh, institute, I would say, if someone wants to get into the higher ed courses like Bachelor of Accounting or Master of Accounting or uh, Business or MIS, they have course in the Gold Coast campus, which is Master of Information System, so which helps for the permanent residency as, uh, residency as well. But in terms of affordability, uh, they are affordable because their fees is quite uh, less as compared to the universities and they are also offering the scholarship of 10 to 15 percent so it depends on the per semester because uh, if they are running the scholarship they will provide 15 percent scholarship when you enroll in their uh, course in every semester and uh, that is the griffith university griffith uh, griffith is also in the gold coast and because most of the universities uh, in the regional area in queensland is in the gold coast and Sunshine coast mostly in gold coast i would say because uh, as this is more popular among students as compared to other regional areas. All areas are regional in Queensland, but other than Brisbane, but these are the most popular. So Griffith University is also comes under category two, and they are offering 25% international student excellence scholarship. And second one is 20% international student academic marriage scholarship. And third one, which is more attractive, which is 50% Griffith Remarkable Scholarship. This is, I mean, you will get the 50% of tuition fees uh, for the whole tuition fees, but they have limited seats for that. We have to apply for that scholarship. Next one is University of Southern Queensland. It comes under category three. Uh, so this year, if, if someone is studying in this university, they have extra benefit of getting two years extra postgraduate visa because it comes under category three. So in total, they can they can have 485 visa for four years. And the most popular courses in this, is in this university is engineering because they have all engineering courses and they have master of information system as well. So if we talk about, um, if we talk about the migration purpose, this university also help, helps you in that way as well. And scholarship, they are running attractive scholarship, which is 25% of uh, scholarship and uh, which is, I mean, a good, good price if you want to study engineering or information system in the region area because you are getting the extra benefit of two years extra post study work visa. And now we will talk about the VET providers uh, because uh, along, with the, uh, along with the universities, we have VET providers as well in the region area. Most of the VET providers are in Gold Coast. We have in other um, region areas as well, VET providers like Keynes, Rockhampton, but that are not uh, much popular because uh, they have they, are, they have limited providers. Most providers are in the Gold Coast. So we have TAFE Queensland. Their popular uh, campuses are Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast. And they are running courses of Diploma of Nursing, Cookery, Automotive. And the other one is Imagine Education, which is also in Gold Coast. And uh, they are running courses of uh, almost all trade courses kind of. Uh, painting and decorating, cookery, automotive, wall and floor tiling, carpentry. So almost all trade courses they have in the Gold Coast campus. And next is entrepreneurial education. They are also in Gold Coast and uh, their major um, course is a uh, wall and floor tiling. Uh, we have Charlton Brown as well. They are providing cookery and they have campus in uh, Gold Coast. Other uh, is Liberty Construction College. So this is the construction. They recently opened their campus in the Sunshine Coast, which is a regional area. And they are uh, offering the construction courses such as uh, 
uh, so carpentry and oil floor tiling and building and construction. And moreover, there are more providers in the regional area which are offering telecommunication courses we, after which we can get the direct skill assessment uh, like in Gold Coast, so which also helps you uh, for the migration purpose as well. So I think this is all about the Queensland. So I'll pass it on to the Saru, who will take the further question and answer. So if you have any inquiries, you can put it on comment and she will take all the questions and answer from the users. Thank you, Manjeet, for sharing that information. And uh, I would just like to say that the students haven't put across any questions yet. Uh, so what I would like to just address the audience that if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section and we will get back to you uh, through Facebook. And at the same time, you can always get in touch with um, any of our education consultants throughout our offices, wherever your location is, whatever office is nearest to you and whoever you are dealing with, uh, you know, we can always uh, take up your questions, assess your profiles, uh, look at which regional area you're looking to move whether it's Tasmania, Canberra, Queensland, Western Australia, South Australia, um, any one of the regional areas. And we can have a look if you are, uh, if you know, if you qualify for a scholarship, I mean, uh, if you're looking for a higher education degree, going for something in nursing, occupational therapy, laboratory medicine, um, and it really attractive scholarships as all of um, we have discussed today from, you know, 25 to 50%. Uh, uh, scholarships, uh, depending, most of them are academic merit-based scholarships, but also there are some scholarships which, you know, you can always get if you just qualify for the program, which ranges somewhere between 5,000 to 15,000 per year. So it all depends on your profile, I would say, when it, when we talk about scholarships. And some universities, they do offer scholarships for niche programs like nursing, social work, uh, laboratory medicine, teaching as well. Um, so be uh, open to discuss those profiles and Please uh, put in your questions in the comment section and we are, one of our team members will definitely get back to you. Thank you for joining us today. Be safe and hope you have a good evening. Thank you.